Welcome back everybody. I figured I'd do a video today showing how to make a server on New Revolution. Gotten a couple comments asking me how to do it. I'm going to try to make this video with as little cuts as possible and I'm not using a script so let's just get to it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is find your New Revolution mod pack and you're going to click up here for downloading server pack. You're going to go ahead and make a new folder on your desktop. I've went ahead and made one. I called it New Rev just to get it going. As you can see right now my folder is empty. So I'm going to take that download file that we just did, it's over here, and I'm going to take everything inside that and I'm going to extract it to that folder we just made on the desktop. Now, once you've done that, you'll see on this server you do not have a .bat file. Instead you have a .ps1 and a .sh. PS1 is PowerShell prompts for Windows. SH is going to be something that Linux uses. I'm not a Linux user. I've fiddled with it in the past, so I'm sorry if I offend anybody, but not knowing how exactly the sh files work. But on Windows, we are going to use the PS1 file. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you want to go on your search bar at the bottom, and you're going to want to type in PowerShell. And you're going to see Windows PowerShell, and we're going to want to run that as administrator. It's going to give you a prompt asking if you're sure you want to run it. And then we are going to type in two commands. First one is going to be git dash execution policy. We're going to press enter. Right now I have mine set to unrestricted, but when you do this as the first time, that's going to say restricted. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put set execution policy unrestricted. And it's going to ask this if you would like yes, all yes, no, no to all, suspend, or what the defaults are. What we're going to do is we are just going to do yes. Then you should be able to type in your git execution policy back. And it should say unrestricted. Now, there is a way to also set it to bypass. However, I do not recommend bypass as it is kind of dangerous to do it that way. As if you open any PowerShell prompt, it will not give you any kind of prompt warning you that it's dangerous to run the files, it'll just start running it immediately. A uh, reason I don't recommend that, obviously, is because maybe you're scrolling around on the internet, you could find some kind of malware or anything like that, and it's just dangerous to have. So unrestricted will still give you a prompt when you try to open a PowerShell, and you can say yes or no to it, but it's not going to immediately run it off the bat. So once we have it set to unrestricted, we can go ahead and close out of this. And then before we start our PowerShell, we can go down to variables and open that. In variables, you can see it's already got our Java arguments set. Now this one is backwards from what we normally see it. We have XMX first and XMS second. The S is going to be the minimum amount of RAM and the X is going to be the maximum amount of RAM. Now, I'm not super familiar on how much RAM you actually need to run this server. It's preset to just using four. I'm just going to turn it up to eight. Then I'm going to file, save, and I'm going to exit out of that. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to right click this PS1 file. We're going to hover over where it says run with PowerShell. We're going to click that. And this is where I was talking about where you get the warning. So it will always say this unless we set it to bypass. I still recommended keeping this to unrestricted. That way you always get this. We can go ahead and type in yes. Now it automatically opens the EULA for you. So you can do a capital I, agree, and press enter. And you'll see it'll start doing everything for you. So I will do a cut right here until this is finished, and I'll be right back. Okay, it is now finished. It does spam false set true, true for me. You can ignore that. Given that this is a Fabric server, I am pretty sure that there is a plugin somewhere that is doing this. It shouldn't overload your server or anything like that. It's just checking for any kind of updates, but like I said, you can just ignore it. So we can go ahead and exit out of this, and you can see it has set all these new folders for us. So what you're going to want to do is you want to go and open your server properties file. 
I'll make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. And then we are going to want to hold our Windows key and press R. Then we're going to type in CMD for command prompt. Press enter. Next thing you're going to want to do is type in IPCONFIG for IP configuration. And you're going to want to find where it says your IPv4 address. You can go ahead and copy that. And we're going to go in here until we see where it says server IP, which is right here. And we're just going to paste that right there. You can see your server port is already preset to 25565. There are a couple more things that you can set if you'd like as level seed, game mode. Uh, one of the things I always like to change is I am in a habit of always changing my difficulty from easy to hard. And there is one more that I normally change in here, which is allow flight. I don't know if this mod pack has any kind of magic or anything in it that allows you to have flight rings. If it does, I recommend setting this to true. Otherwise, you can set it to false. What allow flight does, it's not creative flight. Instead, it's just if you're flying around in a jetpack and you're off the ground for so long, when it's set to false, it will kick you out of the game for flying. But if it's set to true, the server will not have those checks in place. So you don't have to worry about getting kicked out of the game. So now we can file save we can exit out of both of those and then you are good to go back to your start.ps1 file right click it run with powershell type in yes and you can see up here at the top if i can just hold it in place where we changed our java arguments it now says xmx 8 gigs smx xms four gigs so you can see that, that did save in there we can let it keep going through if i can just catch back up to the bottom there i won't cut this one i'll just let it go all the way through that way i can catch it right here you can see it is starting a server on that ip that we did just set and it is preparing the spawn area once this finishes and it starts spamming that set true true again which is right there we know the server has started so we should be able to go into minecraft type in your public ip address for adding a server only share that with people you trust that is something that is dangerous to just post online but go ahead and do that you should be able to refresh and you can see that our server is now online so we should be able to join the world load the terrain and if we give that a couple of seconds we can see we're under Minecraft comes alive. So you can accept all your things. We can see now we are in the game. Loading into an ancient city. I forgot that's what I just collected. I've never actually played through this mod pack. It does look quite interesting, so I may give it a go. Otherwise, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. I will post a couple of things in the description, like the get execution policy. And otherwise, that's everything. If you can, just like, comment, and subscribe if you liked the video. Dislike if you disliked it. And leave me some comments if you have any questions. Like I said, I will do my best to answer anything I can. I do work during the day, so generally the weekends is pretty much the only time that I've got to myself to try to look at these videos. But hopefully this was helpful, and you guys have a good one. Bye for now.